It's happening all over again. Another golf bomb. Let's check these out. Hey, welcome back to the Hat Golf Shop, Jim McClary, Most Worst Certified Club Maker, Club Fitter. And we had yet another golf bomb happen. So how does that occur? Well, what happens is, is we do a lot of fittings, make a lot of orders, and they come from various vendors, and they all show up at the same time. And that's how that happens. So we've got, just to name a few right now, we're building uh, Wilson for Mike. We're building Srixon, Srixon, we're building Srixon for Robert and some new level for, new levels for Greg. And they're all over the place. So we've got Acura, we've got KBS, and we've got some Callaway also that's being put in there. So it's a good time, right? This is the favorite part of doing all this. I mean, I like really doing the fittings because it shows what the person needs. But now you, this is the second part of why it's important to go through the fitting. If you go through the fitting and nobody gives you what you're looking for, then it, it was a worthless endeavor. Now we have that and we're making this to spec. So what do we do first? The first set's going to be for Mike. I've known Mike for quite some time. He's left the, the golf and came back. You know, life gets in the way, medical issues, getting older, all these different things that for everybody that has their ears and kids, right? Now he's back and he likes golfing and he is just a super nice guy. So what did we like for Mike? We liked the Wilson D7, the Wilson D7, not the D7 Forge, the Wilson D7. All right, the Wilson D7 is a distance iron and it has a quite a bit of offset. You can see that right there, where we talk about that. Okay, and it is very strong in its loft. It's a very big club for maximum forgiveness and it's a pretty nice looking club. And then we ended up putting the Acura, the Acura 70s in it. All right, Acura 70s. It seems to be a very popular, very popular shaft. And then the, and then we're going to put in the Golf Pride CP2 mid wrap. Okay, very nice grip too. So all the blue and everything should match up. It should be a good look. We ought to be all right. So why did we get this one? Well, a couple of things. Mike was looking for some distance, so stronger lofts are the way to go. He hits the ball in the air pretty easily, so that's not going to be a problem. Very smooth swinger, right? Looking to pick up some club head speed as well. A little bit lighter shaft. Now, is that a must-have, right? We're talking fitting and building here now. Is it a must-have? You know, they say, oh, graphite makes you swing faster. Well, yeah, it's a lighter shaft, but does it make you swing better, right? Does it make you swing better? Because if you're an aggressive swinger and you get something that's lighter, yeah, you're going to be like that all day long, but if you can't find the golf ball, it's not worth a flip, right? you got to have that quality of hit, that smash factor, whatever it is that you want to call, but that's what it is that you need in order for the ball to actually go further, right? Well, that's what we're looking for. Well, Mike's a pretty smooth fellow, very nice guy. And we put that with those, then it was, it was a whole different, it was a whole different swing. The, the quality of hit went up, the swing speed went up, the distance went up. That's everything that we were looking for in a, in a set of irons. Now, Traditionally, when we get into the sand wedge, I don't like the sand wedges that come with the set, just mostly because they, I believe that sand wedges have a different function altogether. Wedges are a different animal than irons, and they need to be treated as such. However, Mike has an innate talent to be able to use the sand wedge from the set, and that's what he wanted because he liked them all matching. So that's what we're building with that one as well. So that's how we're going to do it. So how do we, how do we get started? Just like anything else, right? We start weighing stuff and we do the shafts.
And then we do the grips. Mike, you're you're lucky as all get out. Well, not lucky because these are good these are good companies. Everything measured out the way it's supposed to. So good for us. So now what we're going to do? Well, we're going to make them to we're going to make them to flex, and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to make these things to flex. I'm going to show you what I do to get started on getting things frequency matched, and then we'll talk about the finished product. Alrighty. So when you do the when you do the frequency matching, you have to have the weights done first in order to match what would be the lightest head, lightest shaft. Why, and why do we do that? Well, that's swing weighting, all right? That helps, it helps us with a consistent swing weight. So if you get the, uh, if you get heaviest shaft, lighter grip, and then go, or heaviest head, lightest shaft, and then lightest head, heaviest shaft, you're gonna end up with some really funky numbers. And it puts everything in line. So if you know you go from lightest to heaviest, lightest to heaviest, lies to heaviest in the grips, you know you're gonna be in really, really, really good shape. All right, so we already know what the length is for Mr. Mike. Set the gauge so I don't forget. And so how do I know? Well, I have a build sheet that came from the fitting, and that's what we're gonna go with. And we start with everything raw. And the Acura shafts are very, very consistent, and they were only as you saw, they're only one gram apart for the entire set, which is virtually nothing. And then we see what we have it to start with. All right, so at my current length, or at the first raw length, I am 278, and on my chart, I'm about one full flex shy of where I want to be. So knowing, that, knowing how that these shafts work, I know what I need to trim, and we will trim that out. I'll go right there. And we try it again. I think there might be a a mass misconception that you know when they when you get these trim codes that are on these shafts that if you just automatically trim what they say in the instruction that you're going to automatically be right where you need right where you need to fall and that could be the furthest thing from the truth because not every shaft is made with the same level of quality some are better some are not and you know and even in the better ones you're always going to have that outlier and that's the reason why you check each and every one when you go do the build. And that is basically dead on. All right, and so do, you, do I shoot for a number? Yeah, I shoot for a number. I shoot for the exact number. But I'm a, and my machine reads in one hundredths of CPMs. So if I can stay within this tenth of this CPM, then I'm, I'm right on. It's one-tenth of a flex, for the lack of a better term. So I am right where I want to be. So now we do the spine and flow, and we get it going, and we do that to the rest of the set. Now these have, when you, now what you can take away from trim codes is that you can say, how much does it take to trim to get to the next flex, to the next iron? And that's a very useful item. So once you've found what it is that you need, once you found what it is that you need as far as the initial length, then you can use that as a guide in order to do the next one going down. That's what we do here. There we go. I'm gonna run a line here so when we go to assemble it, we know where we're going. And that's basically doing the doing the frequency the beginning of frequency matching. Now that's only just one, right? That's only just one shaft. It was one cut, and the reason why it went that fast 
is because I'm extraordinarily familiar with both the head and the shaft. I know how they rack. I've built dozens upon dozens of these sets. So I know what the trims are to begin with. So when you get started on something like that and you're just getting started, you want to look and see, you know, take a look at the trim code. Doesn't mean you have to follow it, but it's a good base to start from. And, and also make sure that your head weights are correct, right? If you use right around 154, 156, some will go higher, some will go lower, just to your personal preference. Right around 156 and the 5, and then you know your increments going down. And then with your shafts being the same and you tr start trimming, you should have a very good frequency match set. It also helps that you have a good frequency analyzer. Now, there is that the cure-all end-all to frequency? Absolutely not. All right, there are different profiles that can affect it. The way that it would read out, there are the you know the head weights that you're searching for. You know, if you get to be swing weight sensitive, that you you know you might have to add some weight, and then that you then readjust the flex, and then you can just keep going from there. Right. So you got to take all these things into consideration. Hence, the reason why that trained monkey can't do it just by by himself. You got to have the gear. You got to have the training. And it's not to say you can't figure it out on your own either, but you know, it, if you're looking for somebody, here it is. If you, uh, you know, and that's beginning of frequency. Now, if you if you want something like that, give us a holler, clubmakermcgolf.net, or at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com, or just give us a call, and we'll be able to work help work you through it. All right. And if you got any other questions, put them in the show notes. We'll be more than happy to entertain them. And let's see your scores go low.